Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel. If you've been here before then a very warm welcome back and if this is your first time then a very warm welcome to you too as well my friends. And in this video we're going to be continuing on with our awesome war cry uh, terrain and scenery pieces and as you can see in part one we focused on the rocks and the foliage and things like that and also all of the rusty sort of old uh, worn out metals and in this video we're going to focus a lot more on things like the wood so we're going to create a lot of different cool natural style uh, worn out wood and things like that. So first things first I'm going to use a flat earth color and we're going to paint this just across all of these wood beams. I'm going to be careful not to get this on any of the areas that I've already painted so any of the rocks and things like that and we're going to make a few really sort of great looking natural worn out wood that also looks really old fashioned. Now for this one I'm going to use uh, some of the Vallejo paints and we're going to paint this using uh, a few different techniques and we're going to create a really cool sort of burnt out look as well and we're going to make this technique look really natural and really sort of um normal or really sort of pleasing to the eye but we're going to do this without using an airbrush we're actually going to use a few cool techniques um, and we're all going to uh, we're going to stick by just using uh, only the brush so throughout the whole of these videos i'm just going to make this nice and simple nice and easy to follow through um, but also give out some really cool um, color schemes and things like that so yeah just covering all of the wood in this uh, flat earth color. Uh, as you can see, I'm switching between my brushes. So I've got my, my big sort of basing brush that I've covered the majority of the, uh, the wood. But then when it comes to some of those really sort of hard to reach areas, I am uh, bringing the brush down to one of my sort of worn out sort of, um, uh, one of my worn out brushes that I use for basing also. So this gives me a little bit more control when we get close to the rocks and areas that we've already painted uh, without worrying too much about wearing out a brush or having a brush that might sort of get damaged by doing a real bit of heavy bit of um, sort of base work or things like that. So once that's dry then I'm going to use a Agrax Earthshade from Citadel. So this is a really cool sort of dark brown colour. Now you can use things like a dark tone or anything like that if you prefer to use the Army Painter. Uh, but for this one I'm just going to use the Citadel and we're going to uh, blend this into this really nice sort of flat earth colour. And you can see uh, straight away by applying the wash on this miniature or on this area how the sort of darker areas fall straight into all those little uh, like sort of creases and all those little uh, bits of wood grain and automatically sort of bring out the character you sort of get in this dark area this real cool amount of character and things comes straight out of the model uh, just like so so once that bit is dry, we're going to wait a little bit of time because it does take a while to dry uh, shades and washes. And once that's dry, then we're going to apply a green wash. So we're going to apply a green wash here from Vallejo. And this green wash has a really cool interest in property because this one will dry down to a almost sort of powdery style. This creates a really, really great technique for doing things like um, uh, terrain and scenery and making things look a little bit more overgrown a little bit more sort of greenery and things like that so I'm applying this to parts of the wood and parts of the brown and then just using a little bit of water attached to the brush and then just going to manipulate some of the edges so that it blends nicely into the base just like so so we're going to have some areas that have got a little bit more green than others and that's cool as well because we're going to have areas and pockets on the model that look like it's a little bit more overgrown or like there's a little bit more tone and color there. Again then we're going to wait for that to dry, we're going to give that quite a bit of time and once that is dry then we're going to use a beige brown color as well so this is a nice natural step up from that flat earth and that's all we're going to do is just using very 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 small amount of paint on the brush we're just going to slowly although this has been sped up for video purposes we're just going to slowly and gently build this up using a nice dry brush the cool thing with dry brushing on things like wood grain is all of that shade and all of that color the greenery and things is going to sit in between the creases and in on the wood grain and then as we use the dry brush this is going to bring out a highlight tone but only across the top layer so this isn't going to undo any of the hard work that we've done by uh, using all of those different washes and the 
those different tongues and those different colors. Instead, this is really going to enhance and bring out all of the color and all of the wood detail as well. The cool thing as well with dry brushing is it is a very rough uh, sort of pr a process. So it does give a bit of a rough feel to it. And again, that does add some really cool character and some really cool deep effect to this sort of wood grain effect as well. And this will add to that character overall. And once that bit is dry, I'm also going to use a small bit of brown sand. I'm just doing the same thing as what we've just done using brown sand. I'm just going to give this another light little bit of dry brush just to bring a bit more highlighting through and just to bring out a little bit more color and a little bit more character. Now with this one, you don't need to be so extreme. You can place this on any sort of small areas, uh, maybe towards the edges and things like that, just to try to bring out as much character and as much color as you like. So you don't have to cover all of the wood in this. This is just a case of having to paint this in areas that you really want to enhance some of the highlights. And once that is done, I'm also going to add one more highlight. And this time I'm going with a green ochre. So this green ochre is a little bit more of a kind of yellowy tone. And again, this is just all about choosing and picking where I want some of those highlights to be. So you can see that I'm just going to uh, pick out some of the more extreme edges, some of the more uh, sort of extreme areas just around uh, the, the break in the wood and things like that. And again, it's just about choosing where you want your highlights and which areas you'd like to be a little bit brighter and a little bit lighter as well. So all, uh, all of our uh, wood will have this sort of uh, more natural sort of neutral kind of um, enhanced uh, highlighting uh, but without spending too much time or working too hard to get this as an effect it's a very easy effect to do and it is a really fun effect to do especially painting wood because you really see all of this wood grain come to life and all of this character just sort of jump out at you as you go and you can see i'm just dabbing little bits here and there. As I say, I've sped this up for video purposes uh, because if I don't speed up the video, the videos will be hours and hours and hours long of me just talking and painting. Now, to make this look like a really cool burnt out effect, we're going to use a deep black weathering powder. So this weathering powder is from the uh, Revel uh, weathering powder set that I showed you in the previous video. And pretty much this is just a black powder. And with the weathering powder, again, I'm using my big basin brush and I'm just dabbing this straight into the pot and then just using that powder and placing part bits of powder onto the wood and then just dabbing my brush just so that I can manipulate that, that, that sort of powder and just so that I can get that dark and spread that across areas of the model and areas of the um, sort of the wood and this is going to create that burnt sort of uh, effect this uh, sort of illusion that there's been a fire and it's burnt through the wood and it's just left this sort of ash and burnt effect just across the edges now we're focusing this again just on those very edges because that's where we're going to get this character. So you're going to have the color and the tone and the texture through the wood. But then just on those edges, it looks like there's been a fire and we've got that ash and soot and all these different things just sort of lingering around those edges there. And it's such a simple, simple technique. But wow, it looks really, really, really cool. It's such a simple little thing to do, but it really does look the part. So that's the first part done. And that was part one with making this burnt uh, looking sort of wood. And from there, now we're gonna make this really sort of moldy old looking wood. I'm gonna use a few different paints for this one. You could use the same paints as in the first bit, but for this one, I'm just gonna use a chestnut color uh, from the scale 75 range. But again, you can use any sort of colors that you like. The reason why I've gone for this one is because this is a little bit of a ready brown. This has a little bit more warmth to it. Um, so if you want, it's sort of a warm color, you could always use something like a uh, flat earth or the mahogany brown, you know, from Vallejo, these sorts of warm, warm tone colors. I just like to paint different things just so that it creates a little bit more of a different technique and gives you guys something different to watch as well, because we don't always want to paint the same things, the same colors. We kind of want to mix things up and have a little bit of fun while trying different brands and things like that as well. 
So once you've painted that and that's dry, I'm then going to use Vallejo uh, just brown wash, nice and simple, straight out of the tub. And as you can see, I'm painting that over the top of the silver parts as well, because that's going to tie the silver parts into the wood in a nice, even fashion. This is going to allow the silver bits and the woody bits to sort of uh, blend together nice and even. And it's also going to make things, once again, a little bit more pleasing to the eye. This is going to allow uh, and tie those colors together really, really well. And it's going to create a really nice earthy tone right the way through this area of the model. Now, as you can see, like I said, using the techniques in part one of the video, you can see what all the metal and the stonework on this is already uh, looking great. So we're just going to tie that all together by using these cool colors. So I'm going to use the Bosch Chestnut and I'm also using Black Earth Brown as well. And I'm going to mix these in a 50-50. If you've watched the channel before, you'll know that I like to step things up in half increments. So it's just one blob of each paint. So that becomes 50% of each color. And that gives us a really nice natural step up. Nice and simple to make. Nice, simple way of mixing your paints together. But a great way of highlighting as well without going too extreme. And that's all I'm going to do with this. Once again, using a nice, simple dry brushing technique which is going to dry brush this lighter color across all of that wood grain and create this really great character and, te and uh, this really great sort of character um, and depth uh, through the miniature just by a simple simple technique now once that's done i'm then going to use the black and brown on its own and this is then the highlight in layer and as you can see once again we're just going to dry brush this across all of that wood grain and get all of that character and get all of that detail coming straight across the miniature in a very very quick and easy fashion this is something that is very very simple to do just a little bit of dry brushing the trick with dry brushing as i've said many times on the channel is all about less is more so making sure that you dab as much of the paint off the brush as possible so that leaves you with just a small amount of paint to drag across those raised edges and create this really great color and this really great depth just like so so something nice and simple nice and quick and easy nothing major or difficult about it now we're going to go back to using that green wash from vallejo this green wash that has this sort of powdery kind of um matte kind of dried down effect and what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of green across some of these areas uh, just like so we're going to, going to apply this just underneath some of the metal areas and around some of these little areas as if the green is just growing down from above then again i'm just going to add a little bit of water to my brush and then i'm just going to manipulate and pull that green down the model just a little bit more so what you get is the green is a lot more vibrant and a lot more prominent closer to the top so that gives us the illusion that the greenery and the moss and the mold is growing closer to those areas and slowly with the weather it's the, the the rain and things like that have sort of just brought that greenery down and just given this kind of green mossy sludgy kind of effect as it goes from there then we're going to move on and use moss and lichen but we're not going to drop the bottle like i've just done here we're going to be as careful as possible give this a really good shake and then we're going to use one of our really sort of damaged old brushes you can see all of the bristles are really sort of separate and broken just like this and these brushes are fantastic for this sort of thing you could use a sponge to do it as well but for this we're going to use a brush and as you can see we're just going to make sure that there's not that much paint on the brush we're just going to make sure that there's just a little bit of paint so that we can use this in a dabbing uh, sort of technique and it's just a case of testing on your finger how much paint is on the brush because we don't want to go too extreme we just want this to have a really nice light sort of effect to it and as you can see i'm just going to use a dabbing technique here and i'm just going to dab some of this yellow just down uh, the area where the green is as well and this is going to create this this moss and this lichen this sort of uh, plant life this kind of growth and greenery and things like that and it's going to create a really cool natural kind of worn out looking wood and it's such a simple way of doing it again as well you can see that color is really starting to show through it does dry down a little bit darker than it looks so don't worry if it looks a little bit too bright at first because it does dry down into a really really fantastic sort of tone and like i say you could use a sponge to do this as well so you could have a sponge where you've got all of those sort of broken sort of open areas and, and things like that so as you dab then it gives you a random pattern and that's kind of what we're looking for you don't want anything to be too uniformed because it's supposed to be mimicking or looking a little bit like sort of nature and nature isn't perfect 
So that's the second part done. And then for the third part, we're gonna paint a really cool looking old worn out bell. So for this one, I'm gonna use something a little bit different. I'm going with an AK Interactive True Metallic Metal and I'm gonna use a burnt tin color. Now this color is very, very dark already. So this is gonna give us a really great base that we can build a great looking worn out bell. So this is gonna give us a ton of character. Now, once again, as you can see the model that I'm painting, you can see all of the stonework that's already done. And of course on this one, you can see where I've done all of the, uh, the woodwork and made the wood really old and worn and things like that as well. Now, once we've done our base color with the burnt tin, we're gonna use the Agrax Earthshade again. So once again, we're going with the Citadel color. And that's all we're gonna do is just place a nice, healthy amount of this uh, color just across the bell, allowing this to sort of pool in all of those areas uh, just around the sort of detailed points, as you can see, the skull and bits in the middle, and of course, all of the writing and symbolism and things like that just across the bottom as well, just like so. And this is gonna add to that weather, it's gonna add to that old fashioned look as if it's dirty and grimy and old and things like that. So we're gonna wait now to let that dry. And once that's dry, we're going back to this really, really great green wash that we've got from Vallejo. And we're just gonna add this green wash into some of these areas around some of the detail points. So we're gonna go across the, um, the symbols across the bottom and around the skull. And then we're just gonna dab and using the dabbing effect, just dab this around some areas of the bell as well, just to kind of add a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture and a little bit more color into it as well just like so so it's nice and nice and simple and once that's done we're also going to boost that a little bit using a verdigris glaze so again this is a very cool and interesting technique this is a cool glaze so what we're going to do is we're going to place some of this around some of the areas around the skull and again around the symbols and just around parts of the bell and once we've applied it we're going to use a little bit of that water as well just going to put a bit of water on our brush and you can see then it gives me the ability to manipulate and move this glaze around the model uh, just in a nice even way. This allows me to stop the glaze from taking over too much and becoming too sort of extreme. This gives me control as to where I want the color to be and how I want to move and manipulate it just like so. You can see with the dabbing effect there, there we go. And then once that's dry, we're then gonna use a bit of burnt tin and a bit of brassy brass. So we're just gonna go again, 50-50, so half of each, one blob of each, and then we're simply just gonna dry brush this sort of tinny brassy kind of color back into the bell. Now the cool thing with dry brushing this is it's not going to take over all of that verdigris and green color. So all of those colors and tones are really gonna stay in uh, the sort of bell and it's really gonna sort of hold together this great old looking worn out bell. But at the same time then we're gonna get this sort of slight highlight and this slight sort of color tone and give us this metallic effect as well in such a quick, simple way. And that's been sort of the theme right the way through. These techniques look amazing. They look fantastic. They make so much character out of your terrain. And yet it's so, so simple to do. Now, as an optional extra, just at the very end, using one of my favorite colors on the channel, Dark Rust 302 from Vallejo, and a very, very fine, small size zero brush. That's all I'm going to do, is just paint by freehand, just a few random little cracks, just to kind of make it look like the bell has a little bit of a crack here or there. Now, you could add a little bit of black or things like that if you'd like, but looking at pictures online, the colors of cracks in an old bell tend to be very, very similar to the color of the bell itself. So that's why I've opted for brown. And there we go. Once we are done, we have sort of three different parts of uh, the, the models, three different terrain pieces with all some really cool uh, different kinds of techniques. They all look amazing. They have all come out so, so well. The bell looks great. The worn out wood, the burnt wood, uh, they look really, really cool. You'll have to let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite, which technique you think would be most useful. Um, and yeah, as always, my friends, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate every single uh, comment, like, and everything that you guys do. Please take care of yourselves, and I will hopefully see you all on the next one.